Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. What happens if instead of training every single week, you take a complete training break every few weeks? Does it boost muscle and strength gains or does it hurt and reduce your gains? A brand new study has examined this. Let's dive in. Why could training breaks be beneficial, besides potentially lowering fatigue? Some evidence suggests that as you train week after week, the anabolic pathways that regulate muscle growth may become desensitized, and that taking a break might be able to resensitize the anabolic pathways, suggesting that implementing breaks every so often could lead to more muscle hypertrophy over the long term. But this is just molecular data. This is where the new study comes into play. It's directly measured muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. 39 trained in individuals with an average of 3.5 years of training experience were assigned into a break or normal group. Both groups trained their upper and lower body twice a week. All the muscle growth and strength measurements were done on the lower body, so we'll just focus on the lower body training, which had subjects train the Smith machine back squat, leg extension, calf press, and seated calf raise with these variables. The normal group trained every single week for 9 weeks. The break group trained for 4 weeks, completely rested in the 5th week, and then trained from the 6th to the final 9th week. Before and after the study, strength was assessed by measuring their maximal isometric leg extension strength and Smith machine back squat one rep max. Muscle growth was assessed by measuring rectus femoris and vastus lateralis thickness at 30, 50, and 70% of the lower leg length, as well as medial gastrocnemius, lateral gastrocnemius, and soleus thickness at 25% of the lower leg length. It was ultimately found that by the end of the study, all muscle growth measurements increased fairly similarly between the break and normal groups. As for strength, both groups increased isometric leg extension strength and Smith machine back squat 1 rep max, but the gains were slightly greater for the normal group. Therefore, this study suggests taking a complete break from training in the middle of 9 weeks did not reduce or increase muscle growth, but it did actually slightly reduce strength gains. So this new study does not strictly support the idea that training breaks resensitize your anabolic pathways and thereby lead to greater muscle growth, but I don't think this study completely debunks the idea of resensitization. You'll see potentially why a little later. Nevertheless, there are different ways you may interpret this data. Since muscle growth was similar between both groups, you may be thinking that it's pretty cool the break groups saw similar gains despite training less. More precisely, the one week break in the middle of the nine weeks resulted in them performing 40 fewer low lower body sets, translating into 11% less work. There's also another study by Oga Sawara that you may be aware of if you followed the House of Hypertrophy for a while, which had one group train every week across 24 weeks, and another group that throughout the 24 weeks cycled between training for 6 weeks and then completely resting for 3 weeks. Chest and triceps growth was similar between both groups by the end of the study, despite the fact the break group trained 25% less. Interestingly, bench press strength gains were also similar between the normal and break groups which somewhat conflicts with the newest study. Nonetheless, another interpretation is that if you hate training breaks, the good news is this new study and the Ogosawara one indicates they aren't necessary for seeing great gains, and we even know strength gains were slightly lowered with the breaks in the new study. The subjects of the new study also did not seem to be fond of the breaks, as they reported feeling lethargic after the break rather than refreshed. Ultimately, you may wish to just take breaks or deloads whenever you feel your body and or mind requires it, as opposed to scheduling them every certain number of weeks. Speaking of deloads, which in this case I mean reducing your volume and or intensity for a week as opposed to stopping training completely, it's not clear if the findings of the new study transfer to deloads. From a muscle building perspective, previous research has interestingly found the molecular responses to deloading and taking breaks were largely similar, but future research on deloads specifically are needed for hypertrophy, and I'm presuming sooner or later we'll have studies on this. If you're curious about further ideas for creating an effective muscle building program, Alpha Progression can help you out. It's got a flexible custom workout generator that can tailor a muscle building program to your needs, with training variables that are grounded in various meta-analyses and reviews from the scientific literature. Input your training experience, the equipment you have available, if you want to focus or neglect certain muscles, how often you want to train, and for how long. If you prefer to have scheduled deloads or periodized set numbers and reps in reserve, those options 
options are available too. You can still edit and individualize things to your liking. The flexibility is virtually endless, which is something I think is truly special about the app. The app also has aesthetic graphs displaying your long-term progression, and there's a database of over 550 exercises with great text and video tutorials. The link in the comments and description gives you a free two-week trial of all the app's features, and if you like it and go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. We just noted a study by Oga Sawara finding across 24 weeks, chest and triceps growth were similar between a normal and break group. However, you can actually see the normal group seemingly were nearing a plateau, whereas the break group gains consistently rebounded at a fairly fast rate after the breaks, perhaps due to being resensitized. Thus, it's possible that in a longer time frame, the group taking the breaks may have truly built more muscle. Maybe this also applies to the new study. Although over nine weeks, muscle growth was similar between the normal and break groups. If the study was longer, perhaps the normal group's growth would near a plateau, whereas the break group, if they were seeing some kind of very small resensitization effects from the breaks, would ultimately experience better hypertrophy. For now, this is very much speculative. It will be interesting to see if future research provides us with insights into whether this is true or not. This new study finds taking a complete break in the middle of nine weeks did not improve or hurt muscle growth, but it did slightly compromise strength gains. We've had other research by Oka Sawara comparably finding that across 24 weeks, taking a three-week break every six weeks did not hurt or improve muscle growth. But in this particular Oka Sawara study, strength gains were also not compromised with a break. Your interpretations and takeaways from this data may differ depending on your point of view. But one clear takeaway from this data is that breaks should not be feared. We know strength gains were reduced in the newest study, but the reduction in strength was only small. And we still have the Oga Sawara study finding strength gains were not compromised by taking training breaks. So whether you have to take an unexpected break or you just like occasionally taking a break, this is perfectly fine. More research is needed on deloads where you reduce volume and or intensity, as well as if training breaks or deloads have any benefits in the very long term. You can be sure that if any new data comes along, we'll be covering it here at the House of Hypertrophy. If you're interested in a breakdown of the science of how often you should train a muscle, feel free to check out this video. Or if you're interested in the science of rep ranges for hypertrophy, feel free to check out this video.